Hey everyone, Josh Norris with Rotor World here with the entire Rotor World football crew, Jesse, Nick, Pat, here to ask the one burning question now focusing on the NFC. And Pat, we'll start off with America's team, question mark, the Dallas Cowboys. Um, yeah, is millennial offensive coordinator uh, Kellen Moore serious about modernizing the Cowboys offense? Because the defining characteristic of the Cowboys 2018 offense was basically running in non-value added situation, like always running on first down, just running you know, in situations where you should not run and hurting your chances of succeeding on successive downs. So is Kellen Moore serious about bringing the Cowboys offense into the 21st century? Uh, everything he said this offseason is very promising, talking about being multiple, talking about everyone's versatility, basically saying the things you want to hear a modern offensive coordinator say. So is he serious about that? Will he be allowed to be serious about that by Jason Garrett and Jerry Jones? And can Dak take that next step yes. to be like a quarterback that really functions and elevates the rest of his offense when it doesn't go according to plan? Do we have that answer? <laughs> it sounds <laughs> like we don't. Lots of big <laughs> don't yes. Right. And, and I, I also think that there's like a, when you look back at the 2018 season for the Cowboys, there's like a pre-Amari and a post-Amari, right? Because... We know with the Raiders last year, Mark Cooper was a zero. He was a nothing. Then he goes to Dallas and has just some monster games, and there's some real wide receiver one potential there with him. We see that every year with Mark Cooper around this time, but for the Cowboys, at least they seem like they know that they have to get the ball to him in meaningful situations. Yeah, they do, and they're another team where yeah, they, the Cowboys usually commit to their stars, and even with a new offensive coordinator, someone who's kind of said he wants to like break the old ways there, the, the Dallas Cowboys are going to be committed to Ezekiel Elliott and to Amari Cooper. And, yeah, you know where and Jason yeah, Whitmore's going. Yeah, yeah oh, I, I honestly almost Randall forgot Cobb. about that. Yeah, uh, I think Randall Cobb's just like a... A nothing? Parallel shift from Cole Beasley's. Um, he might be a slight improvement on Cole receiver, Beasley. Yeah. Um, Maybe five years ago. Like, I, I think... Randall Cobb is completely. Well, I think if you're going to uh, like put a label on Cole Beasley's game, it's Randall Cobb five years ago. Uh, or five years from, I messed up that joke. I, uh, I yeah. think we get the gist of it. <laughs> yeah. um, it is interesting, though, like when an offensive coordinator with no play calling experience or exposures jumps into that role because it's becoming more and more important in the NFL now, right? And all we can go on, Jesse, is like word of mouth here with Kellen Moore. And by all cases, everyone is super impressed in the media and in the NFL of what Kellen Moore could potentially do. Was he a backup quarterback like to, to Dak like two years ago? Right, right. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, he's uh, totally unproven, but I think uh, anything that will give us less Jason Garrett play calling uh, is probably a good thing for this offense. But at the end, like, we're just going to get 30 carries a game for Ezekiel Elliott. Maybe, but hope, maybe they'll be in more optimized situations is the hope. Let's go to Nick Minzio with the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Carson Wentz just signed a long-term contract, as he should, because he's a very good football player. Um, obviously, not the defending Super Bowl champions anymore, Philadelphia Eagles, but a lot of optimism heading into 2019 here, Nick. Yeah, fully committed to Wentz after Foles walked in free agency, so lost. Uh, it wasn't the quarterback for the Super Bowl, obviously, because he tore his ACL, then had a back injury at the end last season, so Nick Foles got, got all this money from playing in the big, big stage. My question is, Wentz is 100% healthy. Can he rebound to that MVP level form that we saw before he got hurt against the Rams in 2017? So, And yes. I think yes is the answer. Here. I think so too, yeah. But the biggest question, as you mentioned, is health. For $32 right. million a year, he better, yeah. And that's something that we have no clue about, right? Because, again, when he was playing so well in 2017, he was the MVP and then right. he got hurt. But then it's two straight injuries, significant ones, right. in two years. But this is maybe, on paper, the most deep team in the NFL. Yeah, this offense is just stacked. Alshon Jeffrey, Deshaun Jackson, J.J. Arcega Whiteside, Miles Sanders, uh, stud offensive line. I mean, right. all the pieces are there for Wentz to completely bounce back. So if you're, if you're looking at odds like on betting sites and you 10 see, to 1, I think yeah, I've seen 6 to 1. I'd be throwing money at Wentz for yeah. MVP. There were some, uh, some interesting locker room rumblings. I forget where that oh, article yeah. came from, but that was that, that's something to watch too. Oh, but obviously it didn't scare him enough thing. to not give him $128 million. Pat, what, what is the infusion of Deshaun Jackson do for this offense and the Eagles? Because that's a wrinkle and an element that really Carson Wentz hasn't had yet. Yeah, and they were missing last year, especially after Mike Wallace got hurt and you know, Matt Collins never really developed. Uh, should make things easier for everybody because you know, Deshaun Jackson's not like an ordinary deep threat. He, if you like dig into his career stats, he's like one of the greatest deep threats in NFL history. And we know Carson Wentz has a huge arm. 
And like we know, uh, Doug Peterson from the Andy Reid tree. That like it's not always like kind of a, a deep game. It's not always like a big part of that offense, but it can be a big part of that offense. Uh, certainly was with the Chiefs last year, and uh, I think it will be. And just make the things easier for everyone else. And this is probably definitely the best supporting cast of Carson Wentz's career. So you have Deshaun Jackson, you have Miles Sanders, who after the draft, Howie Roseman said it was the kind of prospect he'd been waiting for for years. And our Siegel Whiteside, another one super intriguing rookie. So We didn't even talk about Zach Ertz and Dallas Scott. I mean, yeah. just both oh these guys. Oh, my gosh. It's a great point. It's team stacked. Uh, let's go to the Washington Redskins. Uh, Jesse, one year ago, this team had moved on from Kirk Cousins, and they've gone to Alex Smith, thinking that Alex Smith was going to be their quarterback for many years. And That's he breaks his leg. obviously not going to happen. And it seems like it's going to be Colt McCoy, what, Case Keenum, or maybe even Dwayne Haskins. Yeah, my question is, is about Dwayne Haskins. When are we going to see him? Because we know he's the best quarterback on that roster. And, you know, huge shout-out to Dave Gettleman for allowing him to fall to them at 15. <laughs> really lucked out there. Um, you know, I, I liked what I saw on tape of Dwayne Haskins uh, in college. We know he's not super mobile, which is, is a, little, uh, a little bit of a downside in today's NFL where we have so many dual-threat quarterbacks. But he's super accurate um, and just kills it in the, in the middle of the field. Um, but here, here's something I wrote down. So their, their first five games, they have the Eagles in Week 1, Cowboys Week 2, Bears Week 3, Patriots in Week 5. For a, if you're going to throw a guy into the fire, that is a really tough slate to start out with. Yeah. So I would not be surprised if Case Keenum kind of begin, begins the year as the starter and maybe we see them ease in Haskins. And this isn't a year where a lot's expected of them anyway. Is Jay Gruden just like a stopgap coach? Like coach for his job. I think we're going to see Haskins early. Like he needs to play the best quarterback to save his job. So he's either and we know it's not Case Keenum and we know it's not Colt McCoy. He's either a stopgap coach or he's the new Jason Garrett, someone who will just live on forever, uh, even if he's mediocrity. I do think Dwayne Haskins will be the week one starter, and I worry about Dwayne Haskins, an NFL prospect. Uh, he was a subtle mover, I think you could call it, at Ohio State, uh, where he, you know, like kind of like the narrative is that he's completely immobile, which isn't completely true. Like he, right. he was a good subtle mover in the pocket, but it, it was subtle. Uh, he's not much of a mover, and. It's more than just a little concern in the modern NFL. It's a massive concern. Especially if Trent Williams doesn't show up. Yeah, which, uh, you know. It's a big difference from Alex Smith last year, who is one of the more, you know, agile quarterbacks in the league and can make plays with his legs. Yeah, what we're going to see, I'm, I, have, I have my doubts about Dwayne Haskins as an NFL prospect. And, and like, but, yeah, I think he will be the week one starter. I mean, Daniel Schneider, we're not going to – this is not a team yeah. – John Jay Gruden, coach job. It's not a team that's going I to I think the worry, though, is, like, when you have that tough a schedule is, you know, especially a young player like that is breaking their confidence. We've seen that happen before with Deshaun Kaiser in Cleveland. I mean, it's happened who a lot. just wasn't ready, you know. Yeah, but he, the guys who are going to be ready – a lot of, less talented guys. Yeah, the, but the guys who are going to be ready eventually, like – I feel like it can hurt you early in your career, but usually if you're talented enough, you'll overcome right. that. So I don't think they're going to worry too much about that. Moving over to the New York Giants, Daniel Jones, the number six overall pick. When can he show enough to force out Eli Manning from that starting job? You know, right after they selected Jones, Dave Gettleman and Pat Shermer at number six, they were locked in. I mean, they said, quote, unquote, the goal is for Eli to be our quarterback. And cracks, Pat, kind of have shown a little bit since then where Pat Shermer says he wants Daniel Jones to be ready for week one, that, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. And it helps, in Jones' case, that Eli has been one of the worst starting quarterbacks in the league for the last three years. He has. Uh, maybe longer than that, uh, if you want to split hairs. But uh, the coach speak is growing ever more refined with Daniel Jones and Eli Manning. It's honestly a pretty standard – it was a pretty standard offseason of coach speak from the Giants. This happens a lot. Even when it's not Eli Manning, a team drafts a rookie quarterback, and even if it's like Case Keenum, that's the starter. The coach, like, oh no, why would like they act like insulted if like you suggest the rookie's going to start like draft weekend sometimes? Like, no, no, this is Case Keenum's football team. Uh, the rookie still has to earn it. But uh, so to me, it's been a kind of a standard progression of a language from Pat Shermer, and I think Eli will be the week one starter, but yeah. it's going to be very brief. I think his leash is going to be. Yeah. Pretty long, too. Even though the Giants are all slot receivers, like week two or three, there's going to be like a, a Twitter compilation video of Eli Manning horribly. We've already seen it from people. the 2018 season. Yeah, so there's going to be another Odell. one of those, and it's going to be a very early changing the guard. I mean, this is a quarterback, an Eli, that was sacked 78 times over the last two seasons. Which like, is, it's bad offensive line play, but it's well, also yeah, Eli Eric Manning. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's bad offensive line play. Sacks are a quarterback stat. But bad quarterbacks make offensive lines mm -hmm. look worse than they are. And, Correct. Yeah. And now, I mean, it's a worse team offensively. And we know that the foundation, the identity is Saquon Barkley. 
Sure, in the passing game and in the running game. And how many slot receivers can you have? But this is <laughs> also a team. Hate, yeah. This is also a team, Jesse, that tried to at least move on from Eli for a game a couple seasons ago and ended in tragedy for basically <laughs> everyone involved. And so, will Patrick be willing to do that in 2019? When, well, I think in order for them to even like contend to win games. Well, that's the worst part of this is this whole narrative of apology, going out of their way to apologize. We're sorry we benched you for Geno Smith that one time. So we're going to let you basically be the quarterback until you don't want to be anymore. And even though Eli has shown that he's just not an NFL, he's not a starting caliber quarterback at this stage of his career. It's not really a comparable situation. I mean, there's a big difference. I mean, benching Eli was the right decision, but there's a big difference between benching Eli for Geno Smith. And, and number then, one overall pick. Yeah. Not well, overall but pick, the but number one pick. consistent theme here is that he's been bad. Like, yeah. it's okay to bench a quarterback for someone better in that situation and then it was Geno probably and in Eli's defense he was probably better than Geno Smith okay in and they draft like the one first round quarterback that's probably not really going to push for a week one start too I mean we could all go on forever about DeAndre Jones's flaws he'll if he and Dwayne Haskins will tell us a lot in like their two to three preseason games that they play it'll show us a lot and have the answers to them. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.